Could you imagine how successful a cryptocurrency would be if it could allow people to unlock the value of their real world assets, such as their house or even their vehicle? A project that allowed users such as struggling businesses or even individuals to actively participate or create in collateral backed lending pools where these people can collate assets, tokenize them through NFTs, and then obviously receive the funding from such. Now, guys, this would completely remove the need for unjust, biased, centralized lending facilities we currently call banks. Introducing to you Centrifuge, a decentralized network that has utilized the unique capabilities of NFTs to create an ecosystem where consumers and small businesses in mind can prosper with unbiased lending on a mass scale. Now, Centrifuge offers any entity, be that individuals or businesses, the ability to create an on-chain credit fund backed by some form of collateral. And in this case, it's the NFTs that represent a real world asset. Now, this will all be completed through Centrifuge's only current user-facing dApp called Tinlake, which is an asset-backed smart contract lending platform offering its users two options. Now, the first option is to put down real-world assets for collateral, such as your investment property or vehicle, which will take the form of a unique token, aka an NFT. Now, you can create your own pool, which other users may add their assets to, or as I said in the introduction, you can add your asset to an existing pool, albeit as long as it is in line with the protocol's ethos. Now, your asset is valued on a few variables from various pricing oracles, which are connected and a conclusion is drawn. Now, these variables include, but are not limited to publicly available data like your credit score, the country you live in, and the industry the asset has originated from, the supplier's credit score for things like invoices, which are also may include the existing history between the borrower and the invoice. So if you're confused at what I mean by an invoice, I mean a physical invoice you may receive from purchasing something. Now, my personal biggest issue with this is obviously how this relies on centralized data and most likely information regarding the individual, removing the privacy aspect of Web3 we've all known to come and love. However, I think it's very, very important for us to remember that Centrifuge absolutely must use some form of data to actually ensure it can somewhat price these assets correctly. And at this point in time, the only data it can use to do so is centralized. Now, there really is no counter argument here, guys, when you actually think about it. So personally, I originally was a bit critical of Centrifuge for this. However, if we just stop and think about it for a second, it really only does make sense. And also in regards to using available online information about the user, I think it's also mandatory as they need to vet the good from the bad. Remember, this is publicly known information and not personal information. But in saying that, they will still need to know who you are to begin the search, which won't sit well with many pioneers in the space. But I think at the same time, we need to give them a bit of time to perfect this method, which I don't doubt will come in the future because I feel like we are in some weird middle ground between complete decentralization and also decentralized applications that rely on data only found from centralized entity. Remember guys, Rome was not built in a day and right now we're in a weird middle gray area. Okay, so we've established the current users wanting to put up their tokenized assets for collateral to receive funding, but now let's move to the second option and that's the users wanting to actually fund the pools, aka give the users putting up the collateral the funding they actually need. It just doesn't come from anywhere. Now, the reason anyone would want to actually do this is that the APY is actually stable, which is uncommon in most cryptocurrency projects even including some cases of native token staking. Now, these percentages are not only stable, but actually far higher than what you would find in most other centralized alternatives. So in that instance, it can be a great diversification decision for literally any investor, cryptocurrency fanatic or not. So I mean, talk about onboarding the mass market, guys. I can see so much potential with Centrifuge. It is really unbelievable. Think about it for a second. If all the people or struggling businesses that have assets that cannot receive funding from banks because their income streams are weak, this would allow these entities to actually utilize these assets as collateral without a centralized body scrutinizing them because their income might not be what the bank deems as ideal. Now, 
Of course, guys, this is where responsible lending comes into consideration. However, I can tell you from working in a bank for almost four years that there is a difference between responsible lending and flat out prejudice, and the latter unfortunately occurring more often than not. Now, Centrifuge does plan to remove any connotation associated with discrimination and work solely off the value of the assets presented a true people's champion, you could say. Now, in my opinion, this is exactly what DeFi is all about, essentially bringing the power back to the people and enabling everyone's rights to what they deserve. And in this instance, the value of their assets unbiasedly. Now, I would like to discuss more of the technicals behind Centrifuge, but I think what I have explained so far should give you an understanding of what they are currently doing. If you want to find out more about the technicals, read the white paper. Well, hey everyone, my name is Kyron from No BS Crypto and welcome back to a brand new video. For those of you who are new, I would like to say welcome and for my returning subscribers, thanks for coming back and joining me on a new video. My goal with this channel is to provide you with No BS Crypto content on a weekly basis. Now, in this video, we'll be taking a fundamental look at Centrifuge itself in preparation for the second batch of parachain auctions on Polkadot. Now, if the content in this video was actually very informative and you learned something new, I do suggest you go and check out my Hidden Gem course. The link will, of course, be in the description. No more shilling, guys. Let's get stuck into some very, very important things first. Now, of course, I like to be as objective as I possibly can be on this channel, hence the name No BS Crypto. So before we jump into the fundamental breakdown, I would like to address a serious concern I obviously have regarding Centrifuge. Now, as wonderful as an idea it may be to tokenize assets and then take those out as loans, I have but a couple questions that pop into my head that I need to be answered. So the first question is, what actually stops me from just taking off with the actual asset, the physical asset, and also the funds that have given to me? So I understand obviously that in this case, they would sell the collateral, AKA the NFT, but what if no one actually buys that NFT? It's pretty much worthless, and I don't think anyone would want to buy a photo of my piece of land or property in some little town as, say, a hundred, few hundred thousand dollars. I just don't see that actually happening. And the second is, how will Centrifuge then punish me for running away? Will I ever be allowed to participate again? And I guess you could throw a third one in there and say, well, how are they going to actually police this? What will be the consequences in real world consequences of me doing this because we're not talking about a few thousand dollars here guys in a lot of circumstances we're talking about tens if not possibly even hundreds of thousands of dollars these really are not questions that should be taken lightly these are actually fundamental flaws in the system that need to be answered and to be quite honest with you i could not find anything that addresses this I've searched the Medium article, the website, the white paper, and their YouTube channel to no avail. Also, in my research, I come across the official Centrifuge explanation video on their YouTube channel, which had almost every second comment asking the same or similar questions. So, unless I miss something somewhere, uh, this is actually a pretty serious issue, guys. However, if anyone can find any information where Centrifuge themselves, I don't want a third party, I want themselves actually talks about this, I will pin an explanation in the comments section and explain how it all works to you. Otherwise, if anyone from Centrifuge themselves are watching this, please reach out to me via Twitter or my email in my channel bio, and I will again add a pinned comment explaining this. So everyone, I want you right now to scroll down and just check that pinned comment. If I don't have one there, I've got no explanation. And if I do, obviously I will clear any of these issues up. Now, this is not me bagging them out. As I said, I love the idea and I've been following these guys for a long time. I really do love it. As I said, it's the people's champion. However, this is a pretty serious issue. All right, so let's begin with the fundamental breakdown. Now, one important thing I wanna start off with is that I need to bring my video lengths down. So in order to do that, I can't explain everything I normally like to in this section of the video. I can't go into depth with terminologies and what things mean. I just need to give you the facts and the information. If you don't understand, either ask me in the comments or go ahead and uh, purchase my Hidden Gem course and understand for yourself through that way. Now, 
let's begin. So as we all know, an important name and logo is very, very important in any sort of cryptocurrency project because it brings the investors in, which they have. I really do like this. Obviously, it is um, a personal sort of preference, but again, I think we can all agree it's very, very nice. Now, the uh, ticker is CFG, which comes back to the utility token, which also runs under CFG. Now, one thing we need to look at is the watch list. So 27,000 watch list, that is a good, healthy amount. Now, down here to the market cap. So this isn't the micro cap, so I look for 50 mil and under. It's a little bit larger than that in the small cap range. Now, the small cap range is quite actually large, so it's a big gray area there, but it does fall into the small cap range which again is really, really healthy because again, we have high upside, so another tick here. Next, we have the diluted market cap. Now, I'm not, as I said to you, gonna explain what this actually is in depth and explain to you what that can kind of mean for us, but just know that it's if the total supply is in circulation, that's what the uh, the market cap of the coin would be. So we know we have another four or so X from here. Now, the trading volume, I like to look at this in comparison with the market cap. So these two work together and I like to look for a one to 10 ratio. Uh, it's a healthy ratio. Anything under obviously is a bit more healthy as well. Anything over that, it's kind of getting a bit shady. Now, I normally do accept a one to 20 ratio, obviously the one in relation to the market cap and the 20 in relation to the trading volume. That's also pretty healthy in my opinion. But given the current market narrative or, or the sentiment, it is very, very uh, bearish. So no one's gonna to wanna to be selling out of their coin at a loss or obviously uh, don't have the money to be buying in at the moment. So that's understandable. That's why it's so low and uh, I can forgive them for that, okay? So not, there's not too much worries with that one. Now, the circulating supply and the total supply. So I'm gonna be going into this a little bit more when we touch on the tokenomics, but essentially the circulating supply, how many tokens are in circulation compared to how many there currently um, are going to be eventually in circulation, and that is roughly 430 million. Now this is gonna be slightly increased in the very, very late future, but we can roughly assume a one to four dilution at this point, which won't all come at once. This will come staggered into the future, so that is a fine ratio. Normally anything about one to six, one to seven even, depending on obviously how long this takes to all go into circulation is fine, but as of right now, this all looks very, very good. Now. One other thing I want to also touch on is down the bottom here, the market. So where can we actually currently purchase Centrifuge? Now, this is important because we need to know if, uh, for example, it's on Binance, uh, Coinbase, some of these larger exchanges, FTX. If they are already listed on the exchange, there is not the opportunity for us to then obviously sell out when they do list on these exchanges where we see the thousands and the thousands percent gains where we can make a quick, easy profit and reinvest that back into Centrifuge or a different coin, for example, or just take profits. So this is great. I mean, we're on KuCoin here, which is uh, one of the top five exchanges. We're on Gate.io, uh, not a personal favorite of mine, but it is it is up there. Uh, we do have Coinless where it had ICO and OKX. These are some of the larger exchanges. And as we can see here, the confidence level as well as the volume is pretty important because obviously the higher trading volume, uh, the more liquid uh, sort of the funds are. Now, in saying that as well, I would say this is pretty healthy. Um, there's nothing really, really bad about what I'm seeing here. It's on uh, centralized exchanges, which is obviously okay because it's obviously its own network. Now, Overall, I would say I'm pretty bullish on how many uh, exchanges there are here. It's healthy amount and also, it, uh, as I said to you before, it means that when it does launch on Binance, Coinbase, FTX, these larger exchanges that it will shoot up in price, that gives us people who already have invested a chance to take some really, really good profits when we see you know, 5, 10, 15 X results. Now, with that being said, let's take a quick look at the chart. Very, very basic uh, look at it now because we do actually take a look at this in greater detail at the end of the video where we put in potential buy levels. And that's pretty much because me, I like to be a robot when it comes to investing. I set my buy limits or buy uh, zones well and truly before the coin actually hits that level. So when it does go down to that level, I can dollar cost average and I know exactly when I should be buying in and if the price I'm buying into is a steal, okay? All right, so moving forward, let's look at the utility for the token. So for those of you who don't know, what is the rewards going to be or the extra benefits for holding the CFG token or the native utility token, okay? So yes, we know that we can gain rewards from buying into the project, but actually holding those tokens, what does that give us, the investors, the ability to do on the network? So let's take a quick look here. Now, I'm not gonna read to you this top part because essentially this just pretty much tells us that there is governance and transaction fees on the network they do mention here which i don't know why they say this centrifuge is more than a traditional network token 
what they're telling me it really isn't, okay? But anyway, the governance here. So let me just read this part to you. So CFG uh, holders participate in governance through on-chain voting. Token holders have the ability to make decisions to upgrade the chain, including to add new functionality or amend the fee structure. This includes control over how the chain implements the tin link functionality, such as risk models, liquidity provision, and reputation for participating entities. So again, nothing too crazy uh, in the governance sort of section. It's stuff you would definitely see in a decentralized or a DAO network. Now, transaction fees here. So transaction fees are paid in CFG for users for anchors, NFT minting, tin link financing transactions, and many more functionalities to come. A percentage of transaction fees will be distributed to collator nodes and get this, the remainder will be burned at a rate set by on-chain governance. So I'm gonna to talk to you again of, uh, about this in a bit with the tokenomics. Essentially, uh, very, very briefly, what's gonna end up happening is Centrifuge, obviously like any sort of business, needs uh, funding to get off the ground. So what they're gonna be doing is implementing a feature where they mint a lot of tokens to give for incentives for different things like you know promoting the network, things like that. Essentially, they're gonna they're gonna expand or blow up the amount of tokens in circulation, okay? But what they'll be doing to, to bring that back down to where it needs to be is they're gonna be implementing a burn feature over many years. So essentially what's happening is they're minting or creating, it's just like the economy, for example, they're creating all of this money, for example, to help incentivize all these different things. And then eventually uh, over, the, over a certain amount of years, they'll be having a, a thing where they buy back and burn a lot of the tokens that they do give out, essentially. So it brings stability back to the ecosystem once they're fully decentralized, up and running, people know about them and things are working how it's meant to be. So as mentioned, let's very briefly look at this sort of structure that I was talking to you about. Now, as we can see here, CFG economics. So we've got the value and the token supply, so minting uh, mechanics. Now let's have a look. So the token supply of CFG will increase in the short term as it is minted in order to pay for chain security as well as reward centrifuge adoption. The current yearly mint rate of the token to reward to and incentivize chain security through native validators and nominators is 3% of the current token supply. Additionally, tokens are, are minted in order to reward participation in Tin Lake, blah, blah, blah. Now burning mechanism. So a portion of the transaction fees will be burned at a rate set by on-chain governance as the network growth slows in the long term. This burning me mechanism will eventually serve to balance the total supply of the token over time and allow token holders to control inflation of the value of the token. All right, guys, so I've come to edit this part of the video and I've realized I haven't really spelt things out as clearly as I normally like to. So I wanna just cover a few things. Now, first things first, the inflation rate is only going to be there up until about the quarter four of 2031, which is where all the tokens or the initial set amount of tokens will be in circulation, which was initially set at 400 million tokens, which you will soon see in the video where I go over the tokenomics. However, at the time of this economics paper was written, there was an additional 25 million uh, minted CFG tokens uh, sent out for, as I said, uh, incentivization purposes. Now, once the year 2031 has been reached, more particularly the quarter four of 2031, and all of the initial CFG tokens are in circulation, there won't be 400 million tokens. There will be something between 400 million and 450 million tokens in circulation. Those extra 50 million or odd tokens will be used for, as I said, incentivization purposes. So what CFG has taken into consideration and what I mean by the burning mechanism is there will be a set, uh, not, a, not really a set uh, percentage, but a percentage uh, given from the governance to actually buy back and burn these tokens given out over time. So essentially, once the inflation stops come 2031, there will be a pure burn feature in place that will be bringing these tokens back down to the 400 million CFG tokens that were initially supposed to be capped, if that sort of makes sense. So really what's happening here is like any sort of startup business, they need a capital injection to kind of make them uh, popular, make them known and do a few things for the network. So that is pretty much what they're doing here. And they're pretty much saying, all right, we're gonna generate this ourselves, but we're gonna promise you guys there's gonna be about 400 million tokens in existence. And over time, we're gonna be buying these back and making sure that we stick to our word. 
but for a while there will be a, a few extra million tokens in circulation just because of what we need to do to get off the ground i hope this all sort of makes a bit of sense and clears things up as i say if you're a bit confused i'm going to go over the tokenomics and the vesting schedule in a second so let's just move down here and take a look at the centrifuge token distribution so as we can see here a total of 425 million cfg tokens are in circulation here this is the current update to it there initially was if you do read this 400 million cfg tokens and the total amount that was increased that i was talking to you about before since it first launched and it was this year has been 25 million tokens so that's a large amount uh, entered into the uh, equity and again this will always be burnt back in time okay so let's take a quick look at the uh the breakdown here so rewards and grants 7.3 total backers 17.1 core contributors 27 Early ecosystem 8.3, development grants 11.8, community grants 7.1, foundation 11.8, and community sale on Coinless, which was the ICO 9.5. So pretty much all of these are fine. I'm not going to look at those ones there. I like to look at third parties. So who are the entities that are like us, for example, us investors? So who has access to their tokens? <laughs> And who can dump them whenever they want to so they're having a bad day or let's just say they've made some money and they want to all of a sudden sell out and there's no sort of uh, immediate knowledge um, that they're going to be doing this so we essentially could be dumped on so who are these people now i like to look for three main suspects the team okay the advisors and any of the investors and they are these guys here so core contributors is 27 so that are groups together the advisors and the team and the total backers, okay, which is 17.1. So we're looking at just under 40% of the total uh, equity stake here in CFG given to third parties or what I like to call people who can essentially dump whenever they like to, which is really worrying to be honest with you. Now the total backers is fine. We normally sing about 15 to about 25% nowadays. Um, these people are normally, uh, the, sorry, these projects are normally giving these entities uh, that sort of uh, equity. So that's not really too much to worry about. However, the core contributors being 27% is quite a large amount. But then again, we've got to realize that this is broken up not just into one group of people. This is broken up into a couple, two or three or more uh, groups of people, which obviously then have individuals they're given to again. So it's kind of diversified uh, quite a large amount there. So what we're looking at is still a large amount of the equity pool. So that's, that's understandable to be a little bit worried. And that's therefore why I'm telling you I'm a little bit concerned. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not really uh, that worrying considering how many people it's scraped across. But in saying that as well, guys, we need to match this with the with the vesting schedule. So the vesting schedule, if you're unfamiliar, is pretty much where we can see when these people can access their tokens. So we understand that, hey, look, there might be a cliff happening in, in nine months time. And since there's a cliff, they're gonna access, they're gonna have access to 50% of their tokens. Let's hold off around that time period, expect the worst, expect to dump and then we can possibly buy in if they do decide to dump. So let's now take a look at the vesting schedule, which should confirm any of my worries from here. All right, guys, so let me quickly break you down the vesting schedule here very briefly, but let me first introduce you to what they talk about here. So most centrifuge tokens have long-term lockup, which is good. Core contributors and initial backers unlock linearly per month for one year starting from July uh, 2021, which I've indicated on the chart from here. Now, the, team, the core team members have a 48-month lockup when they join with a 12-month cliff. Rewards that have been distributed have no lockups. Now, down here, I've kind of covered it, but it does say an initial uh, an additional 3% of CFG tokens are expected to, to be minted each year as POS block rewards, dot lock rewards, and initial liquidity rewards. However, the burn transaction fees will stabilize the total supply of the CFG tokens over time, as I said to you, and we can see that at the indicated at the top here so eventually it will stabilize and that's indicated at about uh let's just say quarter four of 2030 right so we've got a long time before that happens yeah sure but at the same time it will stabilize which is good now having a quick look here so look at the team which is a, a key uh sort of component to where we need to understand where they have unlocked most of their tokens and that comes at quarter two of 2022 so that's when they receive a large amount of their tokens and that's indicated right here so as we can see they have a large spikes they've gone from about i'd say 50 percent or 44 45 percent up till about 62 63 percent so a large uh, jump in uh, unlocked tokens there and then from there it does kind of steady off uh right you know for about uh seven eight years so 
that's kind of the point where we need to be a bit careful, which is obviously coming up quarter two of 2021 is about uh, March till about June. So 2022, so that, that is coming up. So that tells me that I need to be very, very careful come this time, come this time this year that, hey, these guys might uh, these guys might sell out and um, dump the dump the uh, coin. Now, I don't think they will. I think they're very, a lot, a lot of these team members are very um, sort of passionate about the project they are participating in or they're working on. So we don't really see the team uh, dumping, but they are a third party, so they are ones I like to look out for. Now, the uh, rewards and grants, they, they mainly receive their tokens at quarter three, 2023. Now I have mentioned them because these rewards and grants given to sort of projects and people. So at the same time, these are third parties, so we need to be careful that they may dump as well. So quarter three of 2023, which is right about here. So again, this is the sort of time we need to be a bit careful, but this isn't coming up for over a year now. So we've got a long, long time. And finally, the total backers. So quarter two of 2022, that's in line with uh, this one here. So this is telling me that around quarter two of 2022, we need to keep in mind that a lot of these people may dump, therefore we may see the price decrease depending on the current market situations and depending on their total rewards. So have they gained high rewards from participating in the early stages with Centrifuge, which we can always go back to the early rounds and have a look at what price they bought in at, things like that. So overall guys, I would definitely say be cautious around uh, quarter two of 2022 for a few months after that, it all depends. Say we have a blow off top in the next few months, it's safe to say that'll be okay for the next few years until the market picks itself up again. I do think we're gonna be seeing an extended cycle. So if we do see an extended cycle, these guys may wanna be dumping later this year, depending on obviously when that sort of happens. So be cautious, as I say, quarter two, 2022 is the time. If you do decide to uh, invest in Centrifuge, to have your finger ready on that self uh, sell button. So here are the backers, who are the guys that are invested in hundreds of thousands of dollars into the project to see the long-term success. And this is one of the third parties I was talking about to you before that usually like to dump because these guys are literally in the game just to make money. So uh, we've got some three really, really big names here. We've got Web3, Fembushi Capital, and IOSG Ventures. These guys are huge names in the space. And uh, mark my words, these guys don't just invest in any sort of project. So this gives me a bit of a bit of a tick in the box to say, hey, look, these guys have obviously invested in Centrifuge for the long term. And obviously, if they can see potential, why can't we? Now, obviously, they would have analysts looking at the things we're looking at as well, talking with the Centrifuge team to say, hey, what's happening here? What makes you uh, different to another project sort of thing? And uh, so this gives me confidence. But at the same time, looking at the other investors as well, there are no really big names that at least I'm aware of that make me go, yep, this is a fantastic project and, and give me a lot of confidence. So in saying that there, they do have quite a lot of investors. So, I mean, it's always a good thing. However, the quality does outweigh the quantity in this instance. So if I was gonna rate the just the investors out of 10, I'd probably have to give it a six and a half, maybe maybe seven out of 10 to say the best, simply because there are so many names I don't know. And that normally means that these are pump and dump investors. So what are my closing thoughts on Centrifuge? What do I actually honestly think about it? Everything all added up and everything I've discussed considered. Well, essentially I'm super bullish on the project and what they're planning to do, be that collateralized physical assets, such as your house, your car, invoices and things, things like that to support struggling businesses or individuals and essentially take out that centralized bias sort of lending that you know banks and other uh, financial institutions do provide and pretty much make it so that the, the community supports each other and it's advantageous for everyone. I do like this, I do think it's a fantastic idea, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, my only issue comes in the form of what happens to bad actors or people that don't obviously pay their interest back what happens to those guys that also, you know, take their physical asset and the die that is provided by the investors and run away and never be seen before? You know, what are Centrifuge going to do in terms of um, cracking down on these people? Will they have some sort of centralized body that comes in and, you know, repossesses the vehicle or the house or something like that? 
um you know it's it's hard because that relies on a centralized operator for example and i don't see centrifuge doing something like this it always comes back to centralized options you know no matter what these guys do it's coming back to centralized uh things or what's already sort of in the metaverse or what's already on your a digital profile for example your credit score or any information you have of yourself online already out there exposed which we all have digital profiles of ourselves so it's a very difficult situation for me to be in and a lot of you to be in because I know a lot of you guys are like me and a fanatic on the decentralized security aspects of Web3, which is exactly what we're doing here in cryptocurrency. So it's a very, very hard situation to be in for Centrifuge. Again, we're in a very gray area at the moment because not only is it these guys need to rely on centralized uh, sort of parties to operate things, it's that moving forward, what, what happens in five, 10 years time when there is a technology to move past this, how are they gonna adapt and uh, implement this sort of technology? So there's a lot to think about. And again, a lot of projects at the moment are just narratives, you know, um, even the big top you know, 50 projects, they all say they're doing these wonderful, amazing things, but in the end, it may be working or maybe just starting to work, but essentially, it's not ready for the mass market. And a lot of it, as I said, is a narrative, okay? Just like Centrifuge, it is operating at the moment, it is working, but it is just a narrative because again, some of the problems I've addressed, if they can't be answered or solved effectively, then we might have a bit of a problem on our hands. Again, if you are from Centrifuge or you do know any documents, again, you're learning, I'm learning. So please let me know in the comment section below and I will pin the comment up and uh, obviously explain to you guys if I have missed anything, of course. I don't mind being wrong. I have nothing, uh, no sort of um, worries about being wrong because I'm a human, you know. I can only do so much uh, research myself. So in saying that, that's my opinion on Centrifuge. Again, the investors are about a six and a half, seven out of 10 in my opinion. The token distribution schedule and the vesting schedule, uh, I wanna say, I wanna use the words, okay. Um, we don't have this large outlandish sort of one, two, three billion dollar, uh, sorry, billion tokens in circulation. There is a healthy amount, about 400, 450 million there. Again, the burn rate and uh, it all depends on the burn rate, sorry, and how much is used for incentivized um, options. So we really don't know where this is gonna end up, but um, from what I know, it'll be anywhere between the 400 and 450 million CFG tokens and stabilize in the next 10 years or so. So we've got some time to worry about that. And as I said to you before, the team, sort of the core contributors and, and initial backers and things like that, they normally will receive their tokens around that quarter two, 2022. So it all depends on the market situation. Obviously, if we're in the same situation we're in now, trading in the, in the middle ground with Bitcoin and the whole market really hasn't moved, uh, I don't see these guys selling out at, um, you know, at what they are, two, three X. So we've got some time. So keep that all in mind, guys. I know I've just spilled and, and regurgitated all this information to you but I hope you understand. Now, again, I wanna cut these videos down, so I'm really trying my hardest to just talk 100 miles an hour and get the information out. You can slow me down, obviously, with the YouTube settings. So I want feedback. Let me know how you're liking these new videos and if you want me to change, slow things down, or you do prefer the longer videos where I just talk about things in depth. And uh, one other thing I mentioned, I wanna to mention to you is I'm gonna put a screenshot up of the trading view sort of golden price ratio and the buy zones for you to look at rather than going on there for two or three minutes and taking your time up and just explaining it all to you through that way. So I'm gonna put a screenshot up after I'm finished with this sort of section of the video, just so you can see things a little bit more clearly and you can pause the video and go ahead and implement that yourself. So. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you on the next video, which will most likely be on Crust Network. Thanks, have a good day, bye.